they've lost three in a row. They didn't lose a game until she decided to, oh, I'm sick, I have to go home. That's the talk. Is Katie the reason why the Kings are now on a three-game losing streak? We'll find out right from the analyst's mouth. <laughs> Good morning, Katie. Good morning. Oh, my goodness. Yes, it is all my fault. <laughs> okay. Hey, does she get credit for the wins? Mm-mm. No, just no, the losses. Just losses. Okay. Uh, Katie, did you enjoy the uh, men's national team's win over Iran yesterday? Your thoughts on, uh, really, Christian Pulisic, his goal, and uh, their chances against the Netherlands on Saturday? Yeah, I spent all my time yesterday watching the World Cup. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> did you watch a minute? No, I did not no. watch a minute. Wow. No. Why do you hate yeah. America? <laughs> wow. Oh, my God. <laughs> Is this really how we're starting this morning, you, Dave? You were sick last week, and you're feeling better now. We all love you very much. So, yeah, of course, we got to uh, have a little fun with you coming back. So you are uh, you are near 100%. I know you're not at 100%. I know it absolutely, you had to be dragged, literally dragged from Memphis to Sacramento to uh, miss those next two games. It had to feel uh, good to be back in the chair for what was uh, a, a pretty decent performance against the Suns, really everything but the W. Yeah, you know, they played well against the Suns. Um, Obviously not enough to kind of win that one. But when you look at it in context, you know, the first game back from a road trip for whatever reason is always a little bit challenging. And I I felt like that was not a factor, which to me is growth for this team. Um, And you're playing against the number one seed in the Western Conference, the Phoenix Suns team that is really, really good, which you got to give them credit because, in all honesty, we should be saying Devin Booker is really, really good. Because without Devin Booker, that team is is not even a fraction of what they are in terms of the success that they're seeing early on, playing without Chris Paul and all that. But, you know, I think that the, the Kings are, all things considered, playing well. De'Aaron hasn't played well, you know, up to the standard he started the season with for the last few. Kevin Herter has been struggling. Keegan Murray has been struggling. So when you look at three of the starting lineup really having a difficult time um, and they were still able to, to have an opportunity at the end to win that game. You, you know, I, lo- I try to look at things in context like that and it's not like an excuse mechanism, but it's a, this is an 82 you know, game season kind of perspective and you're not going to be playing at your best for 82 games. And so when you're not playing your best and when you've got multiple people that are struggling, are you still giving yourself an opportunity to be in there to win these games against top tier teams? And they were. Katie Christensen joining us and all guests come to you from the Folsom Lake Honda hotline, Folsom Lake Honda, your one-stop Honda shop. Katie, on that point about De'Aaron, Dave and I were just talking about him and every player has an off game here or there, but I felt like the other night against Phoenix, it looked like it was different than an off night, maybe where he just yeah. wasn't a hundred percent. Are you seeing the same thing? Yeah, I have for a couple games now. It kind of looks like maybe, I, I don't know. He's not running the same way to me. looks like maybe he's got a little bit of a, of a bad will. And there is absolutely no, I, I will say this right now. There is no information in terms of, of that to verify it on the injury report. But I mean, you know, you're, playing throughout the year you can get these little nagging things that you're not you know going to miss a game you're not you know but you're also simultaneously not going to be playing at your top top level you might have something that's nagging whether it's a sore you know quad or hammy or calf or whatever um and to me he just hasn't looked right but obviously he's playing through whatever is going on Katie Christensen joining us. The emotions tonight. I said that uh, I think tonight's going to be a playoff atmosphere. I think the fans are going to be absolutely ballistic. Do you do you agree or disagree that this is going to be a, a very energetic crowd tonight? Yeah, I think that there, without a doubt, is is uh, no chance that this is not going to be an insane environment. Mm-hmm. And I'm really, really excited. I mean when you look at the success that Indiana is having this season and how well Tyrese Halliburton is playing and, and buddy, you know, buddy is, is buddy, right? Like his numbers are always going to be good. He's going to have a lot of incentive to play well in front of the golden one crowd tonight. And he played there a long time. So he's comfortable with the environment, the rims, all that stuff. And he did not play well in these last two games in LA. So that's always scary with a shooter, but Tyrese is just 
been phenomenal. I mean, I don't know if you watched that game against L.A., but the way he played basically from the second quarter on and deep into the fourth quarter just kind of took things over. So he is everything that we thought he was going to be, and now he's in a situation where a franchise is 100% building around him. And so I think it's going to be a lot, a lot of excitement and emotion in the building tonight. Katie, I'm thinking about, you know, looking at the Kings roster, and it's always different once a player comes to the Kings and you get to see all their games. I'm, I'm talking about Malik Monk, where I thought of a guy that's a good athlete, pretty good shooter, and, you know, a nice role player in this league. And now he's a king, and I don't know if it's under Mike Brown or whatever's happened here, but athletic ability is off the charts. His shooting is great, but his playmaking, I, I didn't know he had – all of this in him. What have you seen from Malik here and just how well he's played lately? He has been hands down the most surprising player on this roster to me this season. And I've talked so much about it on the game broadcast and I'm right there with you. I have been really surprised at his playmaking ability and specifically his ability to get deep into the paint, kind of work under the rim he doesn't do it in the same way that Steve Nash did it. Steve Nash used to come from kind of the sidelines and go underneath the basket. Malik is driving straight down the center and he gets right under the basket and there's cutters, whether it's the bonus or, you know, um, Kevin Herter. I, he is, he's got kind of a chemistry in terms of playmaking with multiple people on this roster and he gets downhill and draws defenses and makes plays for others. And I think, Specifically, when it comes to Sabonis, it's really great because someone is actually creating easy opportunities for him to score. And, you know, he's the one that is, is primarily doing that for others. So it gives it takes a little bit of the pressure off of Domas and it allows him to, to get some easy buckets of his own. You played the basketball professionally. You were traded. You went to different cities. No, I was never traded. No, you were. No, but but I'm, I, I'm saying you yeah. were, you returned. Uh, check no, that. I did. You, yes. you returned, yeah, I returned, to, returned to places. To cities. Right. Yeah. Do, do you? Is it something you had to be mentally aware of? Is there a tendency you think amongst athletes returning? And I'm just asking you to call on your own experience, which I know is different, but. To, to, to not push, to not try to do too much, to not get out of your game. Is there a chance, a decent chance, we're going to see Tyrese, Buddy, DeMontis, one or all, uh, pushing a little harder tonight than maybe normal? So in my experience, like for me, the hardest thing was controlling the excitement. Like when I went to Chicago and came back to Phoenix where I had spent really my almost the entirety of my career, and I came back to Phoenix, with all these relationships with fans and, and people that work at the facility, like it was about controlling emotions and staying focused on the game at hand. And I'll admit, I don't recall that game going all that well for me. <laughs> um, so I think that, you know, it's different for every player, how they're able to channel it and focus. But I, I can say without a doubt that both Domas, Tyrese and Buddy, all three of them are coming into this game tonight with a much higher level of excitement and purpose than they they do going into, you know, every other game throughout the season. What's it like as a teammate then? If so put yourself in that other spot where you're the teammate of a player that's making that return. You know it's big for them, but it's kind of an isolated situation where maybe the other players is like, Well, yeah, of course we want to win the game, but it's not really we're not connected emotionally to this. Yeah, I mean, it, as a teammate, uh, like you're having someone come back that you played with, it can it it just depends on kind of the chemistry of your team. And so when you look at specifically, I I can only speak to Tyrese and and Buddy, right? Um, I don't know what the dynamic was with Domas on his team in Indiana, or really I haven't looked to see how many of the players that he played with are still there. I know a handful, but I don't know the exact number, but. You know, when you look at Tyrese and Buddy coming back, Tyrese was really an emotional cog in the wheel for the Kings and not just for the roster, but for the franchise. Right. And so everybody is aware of that. But, you know, like you look at you look at um, Davion, for example, I think that this is a game that Davion probably has circled on his schedule. I mean, you really want to people the business your former teammates 
you know their game inside and out. You've played against them countless times in practice, and you're watching them have this success and growing as a player, and you also want to go out there and prove yourself in that situation. So, yeah, it, it's, it's kind of emotional for a lot of people, not just the people returning, but the people that, you know, played against those guys, played or played with them, rather. What about you? What would be emotional for you, Katie? You know, I – I had a great relationship with Buddy. He was here for so long. Um, I hope they don't boo him. Yeah, you know, whatever the fans do, that's their prerogative, right? Yeah. But from my perspective, you know, Buddy was, he was what he was, right? He he played, he maybe hunted shots. He he passed Peja Stoyakovich for the record for three-pointers. Like, he is one of the great all-time kings just in terms of stats. And you can't ignore that. And Buddy was traded here his rookie year. That's a tough thing to go through. He was here for the longest amount of time. So I have a good relationship with him as a human being. You know, you watch his daughter grow up. You run into him at, you know, the supermarket, like that kind of stuff. And so you develop kind of a relationship, a friendship. So I'm excited to see Buddy. Because of COVID, you know, with Tyrese, his rookie season, I never even met him. We weren't even allowed down in the lower level. But then last year, being around him, he is such a phenomenal human being. And, you know, I did reach out to him privately after he got traded. And I know how hard that was for him. But I think that perspective and and time has probably really helped him with that. He loved Sacramento. And he was so blindsided by that. But one of the things that you have to keep in mind when you're a young player and you're getting traded, especially in Tyrese's situation, he was traded because he has so much value and Indiana saw him as the building piece for their franchise. And so, you know, for him, I'm excited to see his growth and everything that's happening in Indiana, but man, I miss him as a person here. He was so fantastic. That's Katie Christensen. You can hear her on the call tonight, hopefully for a big Kings victory. We light the beam, which has been cold and chilly and dormant for a few days out of Golden One Center. Uh, see you out there tonight, Katie. Are you going to be there, David? I will be there yes. with my other wife. Yes, I will be. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah. Well, this is exciting. I'll warn all the popcorn vendors and and make sure that they have uh, yeah. extra stock and, and we'll be good to go. You only care about seeing Melissa. I understand that. Yeah, well, we all know that this to be the truth. So. See, see you tonight. All right. Okay. Bye, fellas. Bye. Bye. That is uh, Katie Christensen. Am I throwing here or are we uh, going to hit a quick break? All right. 